Welcome back. I'm now joined by Keller Kubero with Doling Law. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Sure. So yeah. you're here to talk about damages as they relate to injury claims, right? Yeah, so today I thought it would be important to talk to viewers. Um, you know, my firm specializes specifically in uh, injury claims, um, negligence claims. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes there's a confusion about what um, injured victims can pursue, what they can't pursue. So I just wanted to kind of break it down a little bit. Okay. So your first category of damages would be your economic damages. That's anything that's basically money related. Yeah, financial. So financial stuff. So um, for instance, you know, the picture behind me is, you know, related to uh, property damage. So obviously that's something that uh, the insurance of the at fault party would, would take care of. But you know, injury claims don't just mean auto claims. I mean, you could be mm -hmm. dealing with uh, product liability claims. You could be dealing with uh, premise liability claims. And so um, economic damages is basically anything you're out of pocket. Whereas if you weren't in that accident, you would have. So think of that as you know, your lost wages. Mm -hmm. um, you're injured, so you can't go to work or you've lost your job. Okay. And so you would pursue that. Um, bills, right? Medical your bills. medical bills and stuff like that. Um, anything related to treatment. Um, due to the accident, that would be another aspect of economic damages that you would pursue. I mean, if you had a serious injury where you could not uh, return to work, let's say permanently, mm -hmm. you'd be dealing with uh, future economic damages and, and that's something that uh, can become very important. Definitely, yeah. And also future medical treatment as well. So those are all things that you would want to look at under that category. The other category would be stuff like non-economic damages. That's your, that's your pain, your suffering, your loss of uh, enjoyment, your mm. loss of quality of life. All of those types of things become very important. Absolutely. Um, you know, think of somebody who is involved in, in an accident of some sort that wasn't their fault and um, they were super active. They were avid mountain bikers, avid golfers. You, you can't do that stuff anymore if you know if you had a substantial injury and that's that that's what non-economic mm. damages are there uh, to help compensate you for and and there's there's caps on that um, and so what that means is you can depending on the type of claim you can only go up to a certain amount uh, to pursue that non-economic damage does okay. the level of injury impact how much you can pursue yeah I mean I think I think just naturally there's there's a relationship between mm. the two okay. um, or there tends to be mm. uh, sometimes there is sometimes there isn't but but yeah I mean typically more sub the more substantial an accident I mean think of uh, all the things it, it if, affects yeah how much it would affect I mean you, it just right? casts this web over so many different aspects of your life mm. and our job is to try to compensate you to make you whole again mm. uh, so that you're fairly compensated for your experience and so, you know, economic damages, very important. Non-economic damages, also very important. But, you know, we've got to prove our damages, and that's why it's very important that, uh, you know, we have all the information in advance before we actively start pursuing the claim. Um, also, you, you would have, uh, in some situations, you could pursue punitive damages mm. against an at-fault party if their behavior that led to an injury was uh, willful or wanton behavior. Okay. Uh, punitive damages are, are rare, but they, they happen. I just had a case where we were pursuing punitive damages on a product liability case. And so um, that's really there to punish the at fault party or company or whatever. Right, um, for negligence. Well, more so because not just ordinary negligence, because you have to actually meet a different burden of proof if you're going to be pursuing punitive damages. Okay. You've got to show that their behavior was willful, wanton behavior, that they knew what they were doing, had a high likelihood of creating injury or damage. That's a whole different standard than, than right. negligence and something we can dig into another day. So if, someone, so if someone wanted to learn more about this because they feel like they might have a case, yeah. wh where can they go? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, my firm again. That's this is only this is the only type of law that we practice. Mm. And um, if anybody has questions for me, um, you can call the office, and uh, you can jump on our website www.dolinglaw.com. And there's just a lot of useful mm. information on our website that can really help guide people so that they can make better decisions. Great. Well, thank you so so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. Sure.
And we'll have all that information on our web channel as well, westernslopenow.com.